So today is uh, April the 3rd, and came in on my day off to do some work. Um, I'm pretty sure this track is probably nearly finished. Um, I probably should have done some more documentation on it while I was while I was currently working on it, but this is um, this is my autumn track. Um, it's got a lot of elements in here. Um, the first sound is just a, a uh, contact piano with an auto filter and a reverb on it to just create some space. Sound like this. And then I have a, another contact patch with a reverb and a slightly higher filtered auto filter on it to um, play a melody on top of it. Um, so that starts off the track. I also have a massive patch with a. Um, with what kind of noise is that? It's a bright noise. And um, I was going to put a performer on it um, to create a sort of rhythm in the amp, but um, that, that wasn't working for some reason, so I just did it with, um, with automation instead. Um, and it sounds a bit like this. Just to give a bit of rhythm to the piece and a bit of ambience as well. I then have some hi-hats made from the metallic noise in Massive with some automation on the colour of them. Uh, with, a, with a big reverb on there as well. I think I have a reverb on the entire, entire drum, drum group with also a filter on there as well to just create some more space and make it sound more distant. Um, what else do we have? We have a sound effect here, which is um, just that. It's um, it's the same contact patch, but it's got an echo on it, and I've uh, automated the left and right echo, so you get a sort of weird, sort of warpy effect. I quite like how it created a little bit of space, and there's also another one here as well. fits really nicely over the top of everything else. Um, and we have our first bass here made in Operator. It's um, meant to be like a liquid dubstep track, so it's got a fair amount of, um, of automation to it. Um, if I can scroll down a little bit more, I might be able to show you some of that. Yeah, so this is what it sounds like. modulation there with the LFOs and the different uh, oscillators coming in and out. Our next bass or spin operator is a little bit more simple. It's um, I sort of played it as like a pluck but with a really long release time. Um, and I've also separated the high and low out and the, the low is just as it is. And the high has a chorus and a reverb and also a hass on it um, to just give it a bit more width and a bit more bit more warmth. Um, it's also got a redux on there which I will use, use later but it's not been used quite yet. That's what that sounds like. Um, we also have this uh, sort of weird plucky sound that I made in a made in massive. It's got a grain delay on it. It's also got um. Saturator just create a little bit of dirt, um, create a little bit of distortion afterwards, and then that goes into an auto filter to cut off that distortion to just give it a bit more sort of vintage and log warped to it. Um, I have the completely dry signal here, which I do believe still has a saturation auto filter on it. Then I have the uh, the grain function. If you mix those together, you get quite a nice sound. And of course, that's going to my reverb send as well for a convolution reverb of uh, a real UM, UEMT plate. Um, so I've just dampened off a little bit with. Okay, I haven't done that, but um, I might have to dampen it off a little bit just to release some of the highs. I've also got an auto filter on there. Oh dear. So that will just dampen off some of the highs of that reverb because I don't want it to sound particularly bright. 
I've also got some uh, reverse samples as well to sort of bring it into that uh, that melody there. Um, our next element of the piece is um, probably our drums. So. Um, this sort of massive swish effect carries on through most of the piece. Um, our hi hats then come come back in in this rhythm. I'll, I'll just play the entire drum drum rhythm. And then I have a, um, a click. I haven't actually put this on the same group because I wanted it to have a little bit more brightness to it, so I didn't put the auto filter on it. I just EQ'd off, I just shelved off the top end. But it has the exact same reverb, I've literally just copied and pasted it from the drum uh, drum group, so it does have it does have the same sort of, uh, sort of feel to it. Um, so if I play that there along with these hi-hats as well. To have some reverse samples going to um, go into that click as well. So that again gives it a bit more space and a bit more ambience to do its thing. Um, I also have a couple like little shaker sounds on a massive patch as well. Just give the piece a bit more subtle rhythm. Our next element will probably be these little plucks that I put in place really quietly in the background with quite a lot of reverb on them so it really sort of uh, blends into the back of the track. Um, the chords I've used are mainly a um, an F major 7 down to a C major 7, which creates quite a distant vibe. It's not usually like a chord sequence you hear too much, uh, especially in like maybe pop music. Um, you could hear maybe hear in a liquid track, probably not a dubstep track, it's quite an ambient distant chord sequence. And uh, at some points, like here I go to an, uh, a D minor, then also an A minor, which are um, a sort of flipped around the pattern, and also it's just a relative, made, the relative minors of our first two chords, so that really sort of just brings at home more coherency, a bit more development and a bit more variation in the core sequence there. Um, our next sound is probably this massive this massive patch, which is fairly simple. It's a um, it's literally just um, a really really quiet sine sine wave and then a um, and then two square waves um, below it and above it. I, I did detune de one of them just to make sure that it didn't uh, didn't phase with the top one, but it sounds like this. Also got a simple delay on there as well, just to create a little bit more, a little bit more space, a little bit more variation within that track. Um, and then we also have these plucks that go as well that you've already heard. Um, we also have another pad sound, which sort of just helps fill in the mids, otherwise the track feels a little bit empty. Quite a lot here. It's just a um, it's a wavetable patch with um, oscillator one and a harmonic sine one, and then also oscillator two, yeah. and then oscillator two um, crossing down with the sub function. Um, my LFOs are sort of modulating the um, modulating the amp and also the position of the oscillator two, but I've also then put an, an auto pan completely phased out to add to that effect. An auto pan to mess with the stereo width. And then a reverb on top of that to make it uh, more spaced out. We then have another bass sound here, which is very similar to the one we heard in the first section. So 
So again, that just sort of adds to the track. Then in the middle section, it's much the same. It's a bit more spaced out, less sounds. Um, I put a redux onto the high portion of this bass here. So it really creates quite a spacey vibe with that. And there's also a, uh, a white noise going through Massive, which I've also filled up and down to just give a little bit of a little bit of sort of space, a little bit of feeling of maybe wind to the track. And our second chorus is much the same, but I've uh, I've turned up the auto filter for both pianos to make it a little bit brighter. Um, turn up the oscillator position on the wavetable pack to make it a little bit brighter as well. That's pretty much about it. Um, again, this is not nearly finished. I'm probably going to do some more work on it. I think most of the structure is fairly done, but there might need to be one or more to like sound effects or maybe a little mastering finishes that need to be done. But overall, I'm pretty happy with this track. It's, um, as I say, not done, but if I do any more changes to it, I will document them on the website or do another video like this. Uh, so yeah, that is about it.